Live from the news leader in Northern California, First 4 News, here's the very latest. And later on, Northern California scientists getting out the big gun and aiming for space. We'll show you what it's all about. We'll be back in a moment. Shooting at the sky with a mighty big gun. That's what scientists just east of San Francisco are doing. And what is the strange experiment about? New Center for Soledad O'Brien explains. Three, two, one. It sounds like a cannon and sort of looks like one, but it's called a gas gun. And with it, scientists at Lawrence Livermore Labs are trying to fire objects at some of the fastest speeds ever. Today, the gun will fire a scramjet engine. Scientists want to see if the scramjet will fly faster than Mach 5.5, or five and a half times the speed of sound. There are practical applications for an engine that can reach hypersonic speed. If you wanted to go to Australia, it would take you about a day or half a day. And so at Mach 10, for example, you get there in an hour. And we have to do the timing of the flashlight. In the experiment, a spark will ignite a mixture of methane and air. That, in turn, fires a piston, which plunges into a tube of pressurized hydrogen. Yeah, this is the uh, pump tube of the gun, and it's ordinary standard steel. The pressure steel. releases a spring and shoots the scramjet engine up another tube. If it screams by at Mach 7 or 8, the experiment is a success. Well, that's record-breaking. It's new stuff. It's revolutionary as far as transportation goes. Engineers will need to precisely determine the speed of the scramjet as it's fired from the gun. Motion picture cameras perched on a nearby hill will track the jet's flight. Super high-speed nanosecond cameras will catch the scramjet at every interval, and delicately rigged foils are set up with precision. The scramjet flies through these things, it pierces them, it shorts them out. That sends data to an oscilloscope which tracks the scramjet's speed. With modification, scientists are certain the gas gun could be used to shoot bigger things into space cost-effectively. It's a way to put stuff in space cheap, stuff you can recognize. You can recognize water, you can recognize propellant, you can recognize all sorts of things, building materials. At one twentieth of the current cost. With the final checks done, they are ready to begin the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Outstanding. It's a successful shot. It's still in the experimental stages, but already there's interest. NASA wants to find an easier, cheaper way to get objects into space, and the Air Force would love a plane that travels at Mach 10. At Lawrence Livermore Labs, sold at O'Brien for First Four News. Well, the final packaged product will not come at a small price. Researchers expect it will cost $100 million. It's 5 p.m., and you're watching KCRA-TV, where the news comes first. With Dave Walker and Lois Hart. Weather with Shelley Monahan, Eric McClendon on sports. Home of Michael Kidd and Live Copter 3. And Northern California's number one news team. This is Channel 3 Reports. We'll tell you about a new gun created in Northern California used to blast objects into space. Well, imagine this, launching objects such as satellites into space without using rockets. Researchers at the Lawrence Livermore Lab have developed a powerful new, what they call, gas gun, which they say can do just that. So Dad O'Brien has details. Two, one. It sounds like a cannon and sort of looks like one. But it's called a gas gun, and with it, scientists at Lawrence Livermore Labs are trying to fire objects at some of the fastest speeds ever. Today, the gun will fire a scramjet engine. Scientists want to see if the scramjet will fly faster than Mach 5.5, or five and a half times the speed of sound. There are practical applications for an engine that can reach hypersonic speed. If you wanted to go to Australia, it would take you about a day or half a day. And so at Mach 10, for example, you get there in an hour. And we have to do the timing of the flashlight. In the experiment, a spark will ignite a mixture of methane and air. That, in turn, fires a piston, which plunges into a tube of pressurized hydrogen. Yeah, this is the uh, pump tube of the gun, and it's ordinary standard steel. The pressure releases a spring and shoots the scramjet engine up another tube. If it screams by at Mach 7 or 8, the experiment is a success. Engineers will need to precisely determine the speed of the scramjet as it's fired from the gun. Motion picture cameras perched on a nearby hill will track the jet's flight. 
Super high-speed nanosecond cameras will catch the scramjet at every interval, and delicately rigged foils are set up with precision. The scramjet flies through these things, it pierces them, it shorts them out. That sends data to an oscilloscope which tracks the scramjet speed. With modification, scientists are certain the gas gun could be used to shoot bigger things into space cost-effectively at 1 20th of the current cost. With the final checks done, they are ready to begin the countdown. One. It's a successful shot. It's still in the experimental stages, but already there's interest. NASA wants to find an easier, cheaper way to get objects into space, and the Air Force would love a plane that travels at Mach 10. At Lawrence Livermore Lab, Solid at O'Brien for Channel 3 reports. For all of Northern California, this is KOVR 13 News, today's news team. Well, everyone's trying to put a satellite into space, and now the fight is on to find the cheapest and easiest way to do that. Researchers in Northern California are working on what they call a space gun. Five, four, three, two, one. It's a multi-million dollar project that could put the shuttle out of commission. Wow. More about it coming up in tonight's special assignment. Did you hear the Big Bang in Northern California this week? Scientists at Lawrence Livermore Lab fired a huge gun, a gun that could be used to shoot satellites into space. Our John Iander was one of few reporters invited to this first public test, and he takes us along for tonight's special assignment. It is a project that writer Jules Verne envisioned over a century ago, to build a monster gun that fires objects into space. Today, that dream is coming true in the hands of two scientists, John Hunter and Harry Cartland. They built this 400-foot gun that fires an 18-inch projectile at nine times the speed of sound. What makes this big gun so feasible is it's relatively low cost, and that's cheap because of what's in these tanks. This is hydrogen, something we have a lot of in our atmosphere, something that's still pretty cheap, and something that packs a big bang. This is now the biggest, most powerful gun in the world, but so far it is only a test model aimed at the side of a mountain. This gun was first test-fired back in December of 1992. Today's shot will be the 12th, and there's a little bit of danger involved in that. You see, once before when this gun was fired, it blew up. Shot number nine, we blew the heck out of it here. Uh, we were all safely underground, of course, about 1,000 feet away, and on the monitors you could see the shielding blocks bulge out, and the big black smoke, just, a big uh, tornado came out this way and blew the, blew the uh, the metal block, metal uh, shielding off the top too. That's not going to happen today. Uh, I guarantee you this won't happen today. <laughs> if it does, you won't see me again, okay? <laughs> Inside the blockhouse, a single home computer is in charge of the launch. Fifteen seconds. Fifteen seconds. The scientists head to safety and leave high-speed cameras behind to watch the explosion. Ten seconds. We reporters are ushered over to a nearby mountaintop a quarter of a mile away. Fingers crossed. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> wow. Good shot. Hey. Yeah. Almost everything you see has been scrounged from someplace else. Giant concrete blocks came from an atomic test program. Four inch metal plate from a battleship. The total cost of this project, just under $3 million. Typically when things get really large, they, they tend to work better when they're simple. Hello, open ram, Houston. Launch a payload on the space shuttle and you'll pay $15,000 a pound. Unmanned rockets run $5,000 a payload pound. But this gun can deliver into space for just $200 a pound. On a rocket, you're hauling up. Most of what you haul up is engines and, and fuel and all that kind of stuff. You've got to carry all that stuff part of the way with you. Whereas with the gun, uh, your, your, your first one or two stages stay on the ground and uh, get used over again. Right now, the cost is so prohibitive that everything you launch into space is cost its weight in gold. The space gun could launch satellites or parts for a space station or supplies to keep a spacecraft going. We could launch fuel for NASA for supplying a, uh, a lunar mission or a Mars mission. 
so you wouldn't be on the margin. Basically, you'd be able to go to these places without having to worry about a, uh, uh, like a Martian Donner Party, where everyone gets there and they can't come back. Okay. Today's test was both perfect and powerful. Here's all that's left of the projectile. In fact, some of the test cameras were even blown over by the shock wave. Yeah, happens. <laughs> Got to do it to get the data. This project is now looking for $100 million in private financing. With that, John and Harry hope to get a working space gun in about four years. It would be able to launch a payload the size of a Volkswagen Bug almost 300 miles into space and give a new meaning to the term Big Bang. At Lawrence Livermore Lab, John Iander, KOVR 13 News. One drawback, though, John tells us, the space gun can't launch human beings. The gun fires with a projectile with such high velocity, the impact simply would crush a human body. Huh. AGO-TV, Channel 7, number one in Northern California. Now, Richard Brown, Daryl and Joe, Pete Giddings Weather, Dr. Dina Dell, and Martin Wyatt Sports. This is Channel 7 News at 6. We're all familiar with the scene of the space shuttle heading back and forth between Earth and space, but imagine a system that would launch things into space without ever leaving the ground. It could happen with something called a gas gun. Channel 7's Leanne Melendez watched as the system was tested near Livermore. Four, three, two, one. You have just seen a miniature jet wow. engine launch from a 400-foot long gas gun at seven times the speed of sound, much too fast for the human eye. This is the projectile. Now watch it being fired frame by frame. The speed creates high temperatures as compressed hydrogen pushes the projectile. This gas gun was built to eventually launch so telecommunication satellites and payloads and into space. The, the primary benefit is that you can go into space affordably now, okay? That is near term. If we had the money right now, in four years, we could launch payloads into space for 5% of the current cost. In order to send a payload into space, scientists and engineers must build a system at least six times larger than this one. The cost? about a hundred million dollars. It's loud. It's like standing in front of a set of large speakers at a rock concert. Its velocity, more than seven times the speed of sound. So approximately seven, eight times, or maybe more, uh, than a commercial jetliner travels at when it's up to speed. Imagine traveling from the Bay Area to Australia in about two hours, when it usually takes 16. And if NASA decides to fund it, the gas gun could take the place of space shuttles to launch objects into space. It would be a much faster method because it uses hydrogen. Uh, hydrogen is just the lightest thing around. That's, that's what nature gives you. Uh, combustion products typically have about 14 times, the 14, 15 times uh, the uh, molecular weight of the hydrogen. So it's quicker and lighter. That's right. A bigger and more complex gas gun could be up and launching in less than five years. In the Altamont Hills, Leanne Melendez, Channel 7 News.